You're cursed, so you better get out of this house soon. A few days ago, my mother-in-law, Vicky, treated me like I was the one who was cursed and kicked me out of her house. I'm Hannah, and I'm 33 years old. Ever since I left school, I've been working as a nurse at a hospital in the city. I'm now an expert at my job, and I'm relied by many people at work. My husband's name is Mike. We met when I was working at the hospital where he was brought in after an accident. We hit it off right away, partly because we were close in age. He kept in touch with me after he got discharged from the hospital, and we began to date. I became more and more attracted to the cheerful and kind Mike. I want you to take care of me from now on. Mike smiles mischievously as he says that. Oh, what are you saying? Please marry me. Yes. After six months of dating, he proposed to me. I wanted to be with him forever, so of course I accepted his proposal. One day, a few days after his proposal, Mike called me out to consult with me. What's wrong? You look so serious. Actually, I didn't tell you this, but I resigned from where I worked the other day. Huh? Why? I'm going to be taking over my father's company anyways in the future. If that happens, then I wouldn't be able to do whatever I want. I thought I'd enjoy it while I can and do a part-time job instead. Why didn't you tell me about such an important thing before you quit your job? I'm sorry, but I don't think it was that big of a deal. When the time comes, my father will probably ask me to take over the company. So until then, I'm gonna take it easy. When the time is right? Are you sure that you can run a company that easily? I'll be able to manage it somehow. I'll have a lot of experts who knows my father working for me. Aren't you just sleeping on the fact that you'll be able to manage when you won't be able to? I thought that Mike had an immature way of thinking about how the society works. He proposed to me only a few days ago and I was just stunned. I may depend on you for a while, but we'll do our best together. And I mean, you have a higher income than me to begin with. Huh? I mean, it's definitely fine to work because I love my job, but in return, Mike, you have to definitely think about your future, okay? Okay, okay, don't worry about it. He seemed to go to work every day, but I never thought that he would quit his job. But it's not like I'm getting married for his money either. Even so, I thought he had the sense to work at least as a normal adult, so I developed a feeling of distrust towards him. But I knew that we had a long life ahead of us, and there would be many more things to come, so I decided to trust him this time. Finally, the day came when we went to greet Mike's parents. I was nervous and excited because I had not been able to go and greet them before due to our schedules. Hey, what are your parents like? Well, my father is pretty busy and independent, but he grew the company all on his own, and well, I think he's a great guy. My mom loves me a lot, so I think you and her will get along well. What does he even mean by that? Oh, I see. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Mike's house is a big house since his father runs a company. Wow, your family is really rich, Mike. A house with a warehouse, that's amazing. Oh my, Mikey, welcome back. Nice to meet you, Vicky. My name is Hannah. Oh, Mikey, you should come back more often to show your face. Uh, did she just ignore me? I'm home, Mom. This is my wife-to-be, Hannah. Ah, yes, okay, well, enjoy your stay here. It seemed like I wasn't welcome at all. Mike's father was away for work, so it was just Mike, Vicky, and I. It was somewhat awkward being with them. I could tell right away that Vicky really loved her son, but somehow they were talking with each other as if I wasn't there. When Mike left as expected, Vicky says this to me. I'm going to ask you directly. Did you choose Mike for his money? Uh, excuse me? You know, you can fool Mike, but not me. Uh, that's not... 
don't you dare think about doing anything to my son or my family, okay? On the way home, Mike suggested that we should live together with his family. You and mom seem to get along well with each other, and wouldn't it be more convenient for us to live together with them after our marriage? Besides, my father and mother don't actually get along very well, and I think it would be reassuring to have you with us. In return, when we have enough money saved up, we will definitely buy a new house and live together. I wanted to fulfill Mike's wishes if I could, but considering the earlier exchange I had with Vicky, it was something I just didn't want to do. But after all, we are the ones getting married, so why don't the two of us just live on our own away from your parents first? We'll think about whether or not we'll live together in the future at that time. Fine, you're a cold person, huh, Hannah? A few days later, Vicky called me up and asked me to reconsider about living together. All right, Hannah. Our family has a long history. In order to accept you, a stranger from nowhere as my son's wife, I need you to prove to me and show me that you're not marrying my son just for money by moving in with us. It's not like I didn't want to cut ties with Mike's parents, and I wanted to be amicable as possible. I felt a little positive that if I made an effort, I would try my best and that Vicky would approve me of being Mike's wife. If that didn't work, Mike and I would live away from them, is what I thought. Not long after that, we got married. My family and friends gave me their blessings at the wedding. But that was the beginning of our hellish life together at Mike's parents' house. I had no intention of quitting my job at all. But I was checked by Vicky one by one about cleaning the house early in the morning, doing laundry even on my days off, and preparing meals. Oh, you can't even cook very well? What a troublesome wife you are. You could have at least bought some side dishes. Huh, I think it's delicious. Is she bullying me? On the days after the night shift, my body was so tired from work that I would pass out by evening. But Mike, whether he knew how I was feeling or not, was living a carefree life on his own. Hey, Mike, about Vicky. Ugh, again? Just make it work with my mom. I have to go to my part-time job now. Hey! One day a year later. At a family gathering, Vicky asks me, Hannah, when are you going to show me my grandchild? Please don't tell me that you're infertile. If you are, you should go to a clinic for a treatment right away. I was getting concerned about it myself even without Vicky's advice. In fact, I had been going to the clinic for a while to consult about infertility treatment. The treatment would cost a lot of money, and I couldn't quit my job, so I had been worrying about it for a long time. I could only reply, I'm thinking about it properly, to her. We had only been married for a year, and yet Vicky tells me this. You're incapable of having children, aren't you? If you are incapable, then it's pointless for you to be even here as Mike's wife. I was shocked by Vicky's heartless words. On top of that, some of my relatives also said that they were worried that I wouldn't be able to produce an heir. When I looked at Mike, he turned his face away and ignored me. I had no one on my side. I'm doing my best. I've been to the clinic and had tests done. Well, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Then you must be able to get pregnant with healthy children, right? If you can't produce an heir, you are completely unnecessary here. If that happens, I will ask you to divorce my Mikey. With those words, something inside me snapped. I've had enough. I'm not a slave that you can just disown me just because I can't get pregnant. Besides, I married Mike, not his whole family. Oh dear, you've really said some things that you can't take back now. You really are not qualified to be a wife after all. It can't be helped if you're only after our money though. Well, I've had it enough too. A woman like you who can't have children better get the hell out of my house. Hearing her words, I packed my bags and left immediately. 
I went back to my parents' house and told them what had happened. Mike called me as soon as he came home from work. Please, come back. If you're not here, I'll be troubled. Troubled by what? Are you saying that knowing what I went through? But I don't want a divorce from you. Then why don't you leave your parents' house and come live together with me? But my mom... Are you going to leave your parents' place or not? Which is it? Uh, let me think about it for a little bit. Huh? In the end, Mike couldn't argue back to Vicky and ended up divorcing me. We had a little trouble during the divorce process. Vicky, who knew that I had my savings, told Mike to divide the property properly between us. But I was totally against it. A meeting was set up to discuss about the issue, but thanks to my parents and the lawyer I had asked for, also complained to Mike about it. So he caved in, and the divorce was successfully finalized with no property division. To this, Vicky was saying, My son said enough is enough, so that's why he was kind enough to cave in and you should be thankful for that. Finally, everything was over. I couldn't see a future with such a crazy person like Vicky. And Mike, who seemed to be forever stuck at his part-time job. I was glad that this was over. I also became to think that I should start my life over again with a refreshed mindset. I was now alone and I had moved out and resumed work with a refreshed mind. And few years later, one day, when I had almost forgotten about the past, Vicky suddenly came to my house. Long time no see, what happened? You were only trying to be innocent when you weren't at all. Our family heirloom is missing ever since you left. Give it back, you thief. I had no idea what she was talking about, but I was not happy to have her making a scene at my front door, so I reluctantly asked her to come inside the house. Vicky was being very aggressive. Our family heirloom, which was placed next to the warehouse, is missing. It was you who took it, right? Not only did she accuse me that I was unable to have children, but she would also accuse me as being a thief. I'm just so stunned. Huh? What do you mean? I have no clue what you're talking about. Fine, I'll give you some time, a few days, to return it back. If you return it in time, then it'll be fine. If you don't, I'll sue you. Vicky finally left after saying that. I had no idea what was going on and all I was left with was a feeling of discomfort. There certainly seemed to be a lot of important things in that huge house, but I had no interest in them at all, so I didn't even take a closer look. Of course, I had no idea how much they were worth for and there was no way I was going to take it. And she just suddenly treats me like a thief. After that, Mike called me in a panic. I'm so sorry, Hannah. I think my mother visited you, but it was a mistake about the family heirloom being stolen. I'm really sorry about this. He told me this over the phone and hang up. Exhausted by this turn of events, I lied on the sofa. A few hours later, the doorbell rang, and both Vicky and Mike came in together. I know you're in there. Come on out. Come out, you cursed one. Give me back what you stole from me. I came all the way here to get it for you. Mom, just please calm down. Vicky is just screaming around for me to return their family heirloom, and Mike is desperately trying to stop her. Um, it's not good for the neighbors to hear you screaming in a place like this, so come inside, please. If you just return what you stole from me, then everything would have been fine. Mom, as I've been saying, there must be some mistake here. Why are you protecting this woman, Mike? What do you mean, why? Th that's... And then it hit me. Mike, could it be you who took the family heirloom? Huh? In the past, when you run out of money, you used to secretly take my accessories out and sell them. W well, that's... Oh no, Mikey, did you... Knowing that he couldn't deny the truth now, Mike began to confess. 
I don't get enough money from my part time job, and mom, you don't give me any allowance these days. My father also told me not to come to work, and I can't pay back my debts because he won't retire anytime soon. Mikey, you're in debt? Apparently, he didn't have enough allowance, so he even began to be in debt. Wow, he really is helpless. So, since it's not my fault at all, can you both please leave? No! The reason Mikey did this is surely because of your influence. He might have borrowed money because you told him to. I can't believe Mikey married a hopeless woman like you. That's right, I'll demand alimony for all the troubles you've caused me. Right, Mikey? Um, you're the one who caused me troubles to begin with. Why is Mike's debt my fault? Isn't it because of the way you brought him up like that he became who he is? Don't you think so? I mean, normally, adults don't act like that. I didn't even want to see you both, but you were the ones who suddenly barged into my house, so who's the crazy ones here? When I was getting tired of this, my husband, who was in the back of the house, came over to me. He said, what's wrong, as he appeared with our baby in his arms. Yes, I had actually remarried. The moment they saw the faces of my new husband, Dave, and our baby, both Vicky and Mike looked very surprised. Of course they were, because my current husband was the lawyer who I had hired from that divorce. Later, I met him coincidentally through a friend who was that lawyer who helped me at that time. Dave, who knew the personalities of my former in-laws and Mike, was worried about me and had helped me in many ways. When I talked to him, we had the same interests and above all, he was a really reliable man. Six months later, we got married. Oh, hi, it's been a while. Both Mike and Vicky were stunned by Dave holding a baby. A baby? No way. Why did you barge in here without any permission? I heard a little about this before, but are you still living without any proper income from a company? It's none of your business. If it's none of my business, then get out. Hannah is my precious wife. Ugh. As Mike got silenced by Dave, Vicky says this. What's wrong with him being unemployed? Mom! Stop treating me like I'm unemployed. My husband sighs loudly, and this makes our daughter cry. You do know that I'm a lawyer, right? If you make any more ludicrous accusations, I will proceed this to the court to take legal action. Let's start with breaking and entering. I only just walked in here for a minute. Then Dave says this. You may think it's easy to say that you just only enter someone's house for a few minutes, but the crime of breaking and entering comes with penalties like imprisonment. The penalty for breaking and entering is up to three years in prison and a fine of up to $1,000. There is also a jail sentence available, so you better be prepared. Pardon me? Hearing those words, both Vicky and Dave rushed out of the house. Seeing them rush out, I said this to them. Oh yes, as you can see, about the infertility thing, the clinic checked everything and found that there was nothing wrong with me. After being told that there was nothing wrong with me, the two of them left quietly. Dave laughed as I said this to them. If you ever come back again, I will be calling the police. Later on, when Dave sent a notice to Vicky's house, my ex-father-in-law called me right away to apologize. I'm so glad I married a very reliable husband. I heard from a mutual friend that Mike is still living with his family. Our family of three is living happily together now. Oh yes, I also found out recently that I am pregnant with our second child. Dave hugged me gently and we are so happy. I am very grateful for my kind husband. I'm so sure that the future of our children is very bright. Once I came home and saw what had happened, I screamed. All the furniture is gone! And the bed, which is very expensive. I'm a good judge of a character, aren't I? 
I felt my blood boil when I saw my mother-in-law Lisa smile as she said that. Lisa, did you perhaps? Yes, I had to have it removed because I wanted to use them in my house. Well, I had no choice but to do this. I hate the fact that you, a part-time wife, are a parasite living off of my son and living in such a nice, luxury apartment. My son is the only reason that you are able to live here. So, don't you dare disobey me as I am his mother. I will make him divorce you if you get too annoying. Always remember that. Hearing this, I said this to Lisa, who was mocking me, while trembling. What have you done? What? This is not my house. All the furniture is not mine either. Huh? Huh? My name is Jane. Mark and I have been dating since we met in the tennis club, which we belonged to when we were students. He had always been that kind of person who loves to live large amongst the class compared to those around him, and he often gave me gifts in which I told him that I wanted it casually, on ordinary days that were not even my birthday. I just wanted to see your happy face, Jane, so that's why I bought it for you. Seeing him smile and say something like that made me like him even more. We graduated from college and got married. We were the first among our friends to have a wedding, and it was celebrated with all of our friends, and I was having the happiest time of my life. Mark and I had been working for a company, but he had asked me if I would quit my job when we got married. As your husband, I want to work and support you, Jane. And I want you, Jane, to take care of the house. And when I come back home, I want you to welcome me back home. Thinking about nowadays, I thought that his idea might be old-fashioned, but I didn't mind being a full-time housewife either. Besides, when I first got married, I had yearned for that kind of typical new wife life. So I decided to quit my job. I enjoyed waiting for Mark's return while doing household chores such as cleaning and doing laundry every day. But no matter how serious I was about cleaning, given the size of the apartment, I still had a lot of free time on my hands. The two of us now live in a normal-sized rental apartment. Mark, who likes to live large, was not that happy about it. But I asked him to respect my opinion that if he was the only one who was going to work, I didn't want us to spend too much money, so we chose the apartment which we live in now. For Mark, who has always worn nice clothes and watches, this apartment might be a little small for him. But I really liked it because it was our first apartment together, even though it was small. One day, Mark came home from work as usual, and we were having dinner together when he suddenly showed me an ad for an apartment. It showed a room in a luxury apartment in a well-known neighborhood, and the rent was almost 10 times what it was now. Looking at the photos, it certainly must be worth it, but as expected, paying this kind of rent would leave me with no money to eat the dinner like I was able to eat today. I think that this is a very nice room. It must be depressing to live in such a small apartment like we are right now. Let's move out. I do understand your feelings, but the rent is too high. I like our apartment, where we live currently, very much. This room may be just the right size for a storage, but it's certainly not the size for people to live in. Don't worry about money, okay? Just leave it to me. However small it may be, I think it's still much bigger than a storage room. Mark's sense of money and usage of money is a little out of line with mine. I have felt this since I was dating him, so it's not something I found out just now. Mark had bowed his head and said that he really wanted to move out, so I really had no choice but to nod. Alright, 
If you insist on it so much, then let's move. Thanks for adjusting to live in this apartment for me until now. But I also want to help you with money, so can I start working part time? I'll work shifts so that I can make dinner by the time you get home, Mark. And besides, I'm bored just staying at home. Okay? No matter how well off he is, with a salary at the company Mark is working for now, I don't think he'd be able to even cover up for the rent. I'm sure he has some other source of income, but I'm still worried. Then, Mark, who allowed me to work part time right away, called the real estate agency and proceeded to sign the contract instantly, even though we were still eating. So, we finished the contract with the apartment we were living in and moved into the new apartment at the end of the month. We moved everything we had in the previous apartment so far, but we still had a few rooms available. At first, I was intimidated by the expensive rent price, but my eyes lit up at the size and comfort of the room and I was excited about my future life. A little later, my mother in law Lisa, who lived far away, came over for a visit. I didn't really like Lisa very much. Right after our engagement, Lisa had always been cold towards me. I wonder she's like that because her only son was taken away from her. On the day she came over for a visit, Lisa, who has always been stingy with me over trivial things, was still looking at me as if I was her enemy. You've just moved into a nice apartment, but the way you clean up is not good at all. In fact, it's pretty messy around here. I know you've only lived in a small apartment before, but I feel sorry for my son with such a messy room. You are his wife, but you can't even clean around the room properly? Just like those mother in laws in a TV drama, she traced her fingers on the window sashes to check for dust, and snuck into the kitchen to look at inside of the fridge as if it was her own apartment. Oh, by the way, I heard you started working a part time job. My son told me. I heard that you're working many hours a day for only a few hundred dollars. It seems like you're wasting a lot of time. What are you even thinking? I can't really understand you. Why don't you go to a beauty salon and try to be beautiful for your husband? You are so strange, aren't you? Oh, so this was where Mark's financial sense was inherited from. It was from his parents. Of course, if I had money, I would have already went to a beauty salon and also bought a lot of cute clothes. But I can't depend on Mark's salary forever. And I want to spend my own money on my own luxuries. I could only smile fondly at Lisa's words since she and I couldn't really understand each other. When I talked to Mark about it, he just laughed and played along, but he wasn't really on my side. Little by little, my frustration kept on building up in my heart. Then, Lisa came to visit me at the apartment many times and repeatedly bullied me and kept on boasting about how financially well off she was compared to us. At first, it was funny to see how she kept on coming over after when we had moved to a better apartment when she didn't come over to visit us at our previous apartment at all. But I couldn't really stand her anymore since she came over so frequently. When I told Lisa that she had been coming here too often recently, she turned red and screamed. I'm Mark's mother, you know. And this is Mark's apartment. Then there is nothing strange about me being here, is there? It's rather strange for a poor person like you to be here. I passed by your neighbor a while ago and she was a very nice and classy lady. Unlike you, of course. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that someone like you was my son's wife, not a wife like her. 
Lisa's sermon continued into the night and finally ended when Mark returned home. I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't even have any time to prepare dinner, so can you order something? I'm going outside to take a little break for a while. Huh? No dinner? What have you been doing this whole day today? Mom came here because she was worried about you, Jane. So you should be taking care of her. <sighs> I'm going to spend the night out today. There was a cheap and comfortable hotel in the neighborhood. Mark saw my exhausted face but showed no signs of worry. And Lisa only uses me to relieve her own exasperation until the sun goes down. I had no place to rest my mind and heart. Mark, without paying any attention to me, started talking with Lisa about ordering food. And with that, I ran out of the house. The next day, at around noon, I came back home. When I looked at the front door, Mark and Lisa's shoes were gone. It seems like Lisa had gone home. I was prepared to hear Lisa's sarcastic voice again. So, I was a little relieved, but I couldn't believe my eyes when I went straight into the bedroom. The bed that had been in the bedroom was gone. I thought that a thief had stole it, but nothing else had been taken and no one would steal that much, no matter how expensive the bed was. I decided to call Lisa and ask her about the bed. Lisa seemed unconcerned and said that she had taken it home with her. What? You have something to say about that? For someone like you, that bed was too luxurious for your taste, right? So that's why I got it. It was still clean too anyways. You can look forward on using the second-hand mattress that I'm going to give to you later on. It's a little torn, but I think it's just right for you. Lisa was smiling at me on the other end of the phone, and I lost my patience. To Lisa, who has been looking down on me forever and ever, I replied with a big smile saying this. Oh, I don't need it. Why don't you dispose of that garbage by yourself? Besides, you took someone else's property without any permission, and you didn't even apologize. What? You're being so arrogant and cocky. You've always had a habit of looking down on people like that, haven't you? That's why people hate you. Don't you get told often that you're miserable? Say as much as you want. But I'll have my bed back soon. As I've been saying, your things belong to Mark. As long as Mark doesn't say no, I'm free to use them whenever I want to. That bed is not ours, Lisa. At my words, Lisa was silent for a moment. What do you mean? I decided to tell her the whole truth as Lisa sounded very confused. I am divorcing Mark. Uh, oh, really? I guess you finally know your place then. So, all my furniture has been moved to a new place and is not in this apartment. That bed is from a company that rents them out. It's rented? You rented a luxurious bed for such a temporary thing? You lousy woman, squeezing Mark's money out of him until the very end. No, it was Mark who chose that bed. He is a man who really liked to look good to others. I'll tell her all the truth about Mark before I say my goodbye. I decided to tell Lisa about Mark's side that she didn't even know about. Mark had money since he was a college student, but that was easy money that he had collected by borrowing money from his classmates and friends. He wasn't rich at all, but just a fool who spent money without thinking. It's true that his parents were rich, but that didn't matter when he graduated college and started to earn his own money. Mark's current salary that he gets from work is probably less than half of what he pays in rent now. He 
he still borrowed money from his friends and secretly went to casinos to gamble and earn money. Even so, his spending spree continued to grow as he attracted attention by having a more lavish wedding than anyone else and moving into a more luxurious apartment. With his desire to only look good around others, he even went to the trouble of ordering a luxury bed from a furniture rental company. In the end, Mark was just a pathetic man who wanted to be just rich. The reason he made me quit my job and be a housewife was also for the sake of opinions from other people. Yesterday, you told me, Lisa, remember? That the neighbor's wife was a wonderful person. Well, that's what Mark said to me last month, too. He said, you should be like her, too. And he also said, if you aren't like her, I would look bad, too. He said this with a kind smile, just like when he used to give me presents. So that day, I showed the divorce papers to Mark. I was really at the end of my patience. You have done a lot for me, Lisa. Please be prepared for that bed, it's quite expensive. I will contact the management company, so I'm sure they will contact you soon, okay? What? Wait! Isn't it your fault for not explaining? Come and get it at my place right away. This is an order. You should at least listen to your own husband's mother. I am divorcing Mark, so you are no longer my husband's mother, Lisa. You are nothing but a stranger to me. I told Lisa once and for all and let out a small breath. Also, if you still want to visit this apartment, you'd better do it soon. I have reported Mark's large debt to the real estate company, so it may be seized by the company soon. If he does get evicted, I hope he can at least rent a room with a bathroom. At my words, Lisa dropped her cell phone without a word. Without waiting for an answer, I hung up and set the phone to block her calls. Good! I guess that's the last of the cleanup before the divorce. I left Mark's apartment that day. Later, I heard that Mark was kicked out of that room. I heard that until the very end, he had been fussing that he was well paid and would soon finish paying off his debts, but he was evicted instantly. The company kindly introduced another room for a very low price for him, but it was about half the size of the first apartment that we lived in. The friends he used to borrow money from have kept their distance away from him and the only thing weighing on him is the bill for repayment to his friends. As for the bed, there seemed to be some scratches and torn pieces of fabric when Lisa took it out without permission, so they had to buy the bed in the end. I think the total cost was less than $10,000, but it wasn't a price that could be prepared easily. And even Lisa, who was very fond of her son, had grown apart from Mark since then. Mark apparently told Lisa that he worked for a very prestigious company and was well paid. Mark was sending his parents several hundred thousand dollars every month, all of which he gathered through gambling or borrowing money. When Lisa found out about this, she apparently realized the unusual nature of Mark's personality about showing off and his bad habit about the usage of money, so she distanced herself from him. Now, I think I can have a little fun conversation with Lisa, but I never want to hear that voice again. Mark will probably lead a lonely life in a small room by himself, abandoned by his parents and his friends. I was alone in the small room I had moved into and stroked the small cactus I had placed by the window. I have no money now because I only work part-time, but I will start working again and save up some money. I didn't have to look good, and I would be able to live a full life with myself. I was relieved to know that I had my own freedom, and that I could live with a cactus in my room, even if it wasn't a luxury apartment. I'm still glad that I took action, even though a lot had happened in a few days. I think I will get some delivery today. It's a bit of a luxury, but oh well. 
Such a small luxury is what true happiness is all about. With this in mind, I was excited to choose which delivery to order.